Didn't I say this is exactly what was going to happen? New tonight, a massive lawsuit announced on behalf of those affected by the Robb Elementary School shooting. The class action suit is going after several law enforcement agencies as well as gun manufacturer Daniel Defense. The lead attorney filing the suit tells the night team's Lee Waldman they're fighting for justice and accountability. He intends to file a class action lawsuit against anyone who can be held responsible for what happened inside of Robb Elementary on May 24th. We have the school police. Okay, we have other down there. We have the city police and we have the the sheriffs and we have the the uh, Texas Rangers, the DPS and we have the Border Patrol as well as gun manufacturer Daniel Defense and Oasis Outback where the gunman bought the weapon used. You know, a lot of people will see this and say, oh, it's just a money grab. And in many ways it is, but it's also a coordinated attack on the Second Amendment. This lawsuit doesn't hurt any of the government agencies that are listed. And sure, I can see a justification and a reason for wanting to sue them. But if they are required to pay anything, they'll just use your tax dollars to do it. However, when it comes to suing gun companies that made the gun that the Uvalde shooter used, what else is it other than a way to financially destroy the company? No one finds it suspicious that a firm out of California is filing a class action lawsuit based on a shooting that took place in Texas. The same California where the governor just passed a law saying this. They can no longer hide from the mass destruction that they have caused. I'll be signing a bill that will allow Californians to sue irresponsible gun manufacturers and distributors. If you've been hurt or a family member is a victim of gun violence, you can now go to court and hold the makers of these deadly weapons accountable. There is a federal law called the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. This law was passed in 2005 explicitly to protect gun manufacturers from these types of lawsuits where the only reason the company is being sued is because one of their guns was used in a crime. The only reason the law was even created was because the anti-gun lobby literally tried to use suing gun companies as a strategy to pass gun control by way of simply bankrupting gun companies by making them fight so many lawsuits they'd run out of money trying to fight them. Joe Biden has spent his entire presidency trying to eliminate this law because it was the only thing stopping them from using the court system as a battering ram against gun companies. Unfortunately, they found a way around this law by saying, we're not suing simply because the gun was used. We're suing them because they created advertising that made the shooter want to buy the gun to commit the shooting. Clearly, this argument is a massive reach, but it doesn't matter because the goal isn't to win the case. It's to get them to spend a ton of money fighting a bunch of these stupid cases or simply settling them for some undisclosed or stupid amount of money. And it works. The survivors of Sandy Hook just won a $73 million settlement after suing the now bankrupt gun company whose gun was used by the shooter in Sandy Hook. They used this very argument to get the case to court circumventing the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, which was specifically designed to prevent these types of frivolous lawsuits. That's exactly what's going on here with this potential lawsuit. When this lawsuit is filed, it will initially be stopped by Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, but they'll argue that Daniel Defense's marketing is what made the shooter do what he did. Dumb as this argument is, this argument will work to get around the federal law that says you can't just sue a gun company simply because the gun was used. The attorney bringing this lawsuit doesn't even hide his motive. He literally said this lawsuit is to scare gun companies away from making AR-15s because they'll be sued out of existence if they do. The eye-popping figure also sends a message, Bonner says. We cannot allow these kinds of shooting tragedies to ever occur again. He hopes the sticker shock serves as a deterrent to AR-15 style gun makers. We are in a minefield of legal, cultural, and political attack. The anti-gun lobby is unified, but more importantly, they're organized. Each side knows its role in achieving their gun control goals, and they stick to their roles. The big money funds everything. The lawyers attack gun companies with frivolous lawsuits. The politicians try to pass laws, making it harder on gun owners, and the advocacy groups try to sway the people in the middle to change the culture from pro-gun to anti-gun. 
None of them tries to do the job of the other. Whereas in the gun community, we expect everyone to be and do everything in terms of fighting back against the anti-gun lobby and for the second amendment. The anti-gun lobby knows this creates chaos and it makes us less effective at fighting back. That's why they'll drag companies like Ruger and Daniel Defense to Congress and ask them some innocuous question and get them to say something that makes some people in the gun industry mad, but they're not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. They're looking for one soundbite that will have us turning against each other in a split second. We need to let the gun companies focus on making the best guns they can. We need to let 2A advocates focus on being the best advocates they can. And we need to let the gun community content creators focus on being the best gun content creators that they can and be unified in our understanding of each other's roles. That only makes us stronger and more formidable opponents to the anti-gun lobby. I get it. Sometimes people say certain things we don't like, but do we genuinely truly believe that the people in the gun community want to see the gun community destroyed? Do we genuinely believe that we want to see gun companies do or say things that would make them lose money as a gun company? Understand that our zeal and our vigor to defend the second amendment or to put on a purity test as to who's the most pure 2A person or 2A gun company or 2A group in the community actually kind of hurts us to a degree. Because at the end of the day, there is an enemy out there that we need to focus on and we need to fight. And that's where we need to focus our attention. But we also have to understand where the value comes from each of the people, organizations or companies that are involved in this fight to protect our rights and not be so quick to vilify or destroy or help destroy the very allies that we have in this space that the anti-gun advocacy groups the anti-gun politicians the anti-gun lawyers are actively trying to destroy you know we talk a lot about empowerment in this country except for when it comes to the second amendment however i can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family so help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.